Chapter One of Uncle Remus and Brer Rabbit. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Shinbear. Uncle Remus and Brer Rabbit by Joel Chandler Harris. The creatures go to the barbecue. Once upon a time, said Uncle Remus to the little boy. But when was once upon a time? the child interrupted to ask. The old man smiled. I spect twas one time or two times, and maybe a time and a half. You know when Johnny Ash Cake gun to bake? Well, twas long in dem days. Once upon a time, he resumed, Mr. Man had a garden so fine that all the neighbors come to see it. Some would look at it over the fence, some would peek through the cracks, and some would come and look at it by the light of the stars. And one of em was old Brer Rabbit. Starlight, moonlight, cloudlight, the nightlight was the light for him. When the turn of the morning come, he is always up and about, a feeling pretty well, I thank you, sir. Now, then you done hear what I say. There was Mr. Man, yonder was the garden, and here was old Brer Rabbit. Uncle Remus made a map of this part of the story by marking in the sand with his walking cane. Well, this being the case, what you spec going to happen? Nothing in the round world but what been happening since greens and sparrowgrass was planted in the ground. They look fine, and they taste fine, and long towards the shank in the morning, Brer Rabbit had creep through the crack and the fence and nibble at him. He take the greens, but lee his tracks, most specially right out of a rain, taking and leaving it's the way of the world. Well, one morning, Mr. Man went out in his truck patch, and he finds something missing. A cabbage here, a turnip dire, and a mess of beans yonder. And he asks, how come dis? He looked round, he did, and he seed Brer Rabbit's tracks what he couldn't take with him. Brer Rabbit had left his shoes at home and come barefooted. So Mr. Man, he called his dogs. Here, Buck, here, Bringer, here, Blue. And he sick em on the track, and here they went. Who you'd a thunk they was running after forty limb rhinoceroses from the fuss they made. Brer Rabbit, he hear em comin, and he put out for home, kind of doublin round like he do these days. When he got to the pint where he can sit down for the rest his face in his hands, he took a poplar leaf and he gun to fan hisself. Then Brer Fox come a trotin up. He say, Brer Rabbit, what's all this fuss I hear in the woods? What do ye name of goodness do it mean? Brer Rabbit kind of scratch his head and low, Why, they're in trying for to drive me to the big barbecue on the creek. They all ax me, and when I fuse, they say they ain't wanted to make me go anyhow. They ain't no fun in being as populous as what I is, Brer Fox. If you want to go, let's get in ahead of the hounds and go lickety-split down the big road. Brer Fox rolled his little eyes and lick his chops where he dribbled at the mouth and put out to the barbecue. And he ain't more than made his disappearance, for here comes Brer Wolf. And when he got the news, off he put. And he ain't more than got out of sight, for here comes old Brer Bear. And when he hear talk of the bacon meat and the big pan of gravy, he sat up on his behind legs and snorted. Then off he put, and he ain't got out of hearing for Brer Coon come racking up, and when he got the news, he put out. So there they was, and what you gwine do about it? It seems like they all got in front of the dogs, uh, the dogs got behind them, and Brer Rabbit sat by the creek, side laughing and hitting at the snake doctors. <laughs> <laughs> and them pole creatures had to go clean past the barbecue, if there was any barbecue, which I don't scarcely spec there was. That what made me say what I does. 
when you get an invite to the barbecue, you better find out when and where it's at and who's running it. End of chapter one. Chapter two of Uncle Remus and Brer Rabbit. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Chenever. Uncle Remus and Brer Rabbit by Joel Chandler Harris. Brer Rabbit's Frolic. The little boy, when he next saw Uncle Remus, after hearing how the animals went to the barbecue, wanted to know what happened to them. He was anxious to learn if any of them were hurt by the dogs that had been chasing Brother Rabbit. The old darky closed his eyes and chuckled. <laughs> you sure is asking something now, honey. Under his hat, if he had any, Brother Rabbit had a mighty quick thinking apple rattus, and most in generally all the time. De pranks he played on de other creatures pestered em both ways a comin and a gwine. De dogs done mighty well, long as days had dealin wid de little fry like Bruh Fox and Bruh Coon and Bruh Wolf, but when dey run again old Bruh Bar, <laughs> they show struck a snag. De most so vigorous was de identical one dat got the worst hurted. He got too close to Bruh Bar. And when he look at his cell fur in running water, he took notice that he was split wide open from flank to dewlap. After the ruckus was over, the creatures hobbled off home the best they could and laid round in sun and shade fur to let the cuts and gashes get good and well. When they got so they could sagatuate and pay the party calls, they agreed fur to ensemble somewheres and hit on some plan fur to outdo Bruh Rabbit. Well, they had the ensembly and they jarred and jarred. They's like your old pa do when he ain't feeling right well. But by and by they agreed upon a plan that looked like it might ought work. They agreed fur to make out that they gwine to have a dance. They know that old Bruh Rabbit was all as keen for that, and they say they'll give him an invite, and when he got there, they'll ax him for to play the fiddle, and if he fused, they'll close in on him and make way with him. So fur, so good. But all the time they was jowering and confabbing, old Bruh Rabbit was settin' in a shady place in the grass, a hearin' every word they say. When the time come, he crope out, he did, and run round, and the first news they knowed, here he comes down the big road, boogity boogity, same as a horse that's broke to the pasture fence. He says, says he, Why, hello, friends, and howdy too, cause I ain't seed you all since the last time. Where the name of goodness is you being these odd come shorts? And how did you far at the barbecue? If my two eyeballs ain't gone and got crooked, there's old Brer Bear. Him of the sharp tail and sharp tush, the very one I'm a-hunting fur. And dar's Brer Coon. I show is in big luck. There's going to be a big frolic at Miss Meadows, and her and the gals want Brer Bear fur to show em the rose in y'all shuffle. And they put Brer Coon down for the jig they calls Rack Back Davy. I'm to play the fiddle, something I ain't done since my oldest gal had the mumps and the measles, before the same day and hour. Well, this morning I took down the fiddle from where she was hanging, and drawed the bow backwards and thirds a time or two, and then I shot my eyes and hit some of the old-time tunes, and when I come to myself, there was my whole blessed family skipping and a sashay around the room, spite of the fact that breakfast was to be cooked. With that, Bruh Rabbit bowed, he did, and went back down the road like the dogs was out of him. But what happened then, the little boy asked. <laughs> Nothing tall, replied Uncle Remus, taking up the chuckle where he had left off. De creatures ain't had no dance, and when they went to Miss Meadows, she...
Chapter Three of Uncle Remus and Br'er Rabbit. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Chenevere. Uncle Remus and Br'er Rabbit by Joel Chandler Harris. Brother Bear's Big House. Of all the creeters said Uncle Remus, in response to a questioning look on the part of the little boy, Old Brer Bear had the biggest and the warmest house. I don't know why nor wherefore, but I'm a-tellin' you the plain fact. They is as they done told unto me. If I can help it, I never will be deceiving you, nor lead you into no bad habits. Yo, pappy, tried it with me a mighty long time. And if you'll ask him, He'll tell you that the one thing I never did do was to deceive him whilst he had his eyes open. Not if I knows myself. Well, old Brer Bar had the big house I'm a-tellin' you about. If he ever is brag on it, it ain't never come down to me. Yet that is what he had, a big house, and plenty of room for him and his family. And he ain't had no more than he need. Cause all of his family was fat and had what folks call heft, the natural plumpness. He had a son named Simon, and a gal named Sue, not countin' his old woman, and they all lived with one at her day after day, and night at her night. And when one of em went abroad, they'd be expected home about meal time, if not before. And they sagashuated right along from day to day, washing the face and hands in the same wash pan, in the back porch, and wiping on the same towel, same as all happy families allers does. Well, time went on and fotched the changes that might be spected, and one day there come a mighty knocking on Brer Bar's door. Brer Bar he holler out he did, who that come a knocking this time of the year? For the corn's done planted and the cotton crops pitched. The one at the door make a big noise and rattle the hinges. Brer Bar holler out he did, Don't tar down my house. Who is you anyhow and what you want? And the answer come, I'm one and Dorfin not two. If you're more than one, who is you and what you doing in dar? Brer Bar, he says, says he, I'm all the one and mighty not two. But I thank you for to tell me your full family name. Then the answer come. I'm the knocker and the mover before, and if I can't climb over, I'll climb under if you do, but give me the word. Some calls me bruh polecat, and some a big word that it ain't worth while to remember. But I want to move in. It's mighty cold out here, and all I meets tells me it's mighty warm in dar where you is. Then old Brer Bar say, says he, It's warm enough for them what stays in here, but not nice so warm for them on the outside. What does you really want? Brer Polecat Spawn, he said, I want a heap of things that I don't get. I'm a mighty good housekeeper, but I takes notice that there's mighty few folks that wants me to keep house for him. Brer Bar say, says he, I ain't got no room for no housekeeper. We ain't scarcely got room for to go to bed. If you can keep my house on the outside, you're mighty welcome. Bruh Polecat say, You may think you ain't got no room, but I bet you got as much room as anybody what I know. If you let me in dar one time, I bound you I'll make all the room I want. Uncle Remus paused to see what effect this statement would have on the little boy. He closed his eyes as though he were tired. But when he opened them again, he saw the faint shadow of a smile on the child's face. "'Tain't gwine to hurt you fur to laugh a little bit, honey. <laughs> Bruh Polecat come in Bruh Bar's house, and he had such bad breath. Chapter Four of Uncle Remus and Bruh Rabbit. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. 
For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Chenever. Uncle Remus and Br'er Rabbit by Joel Chandler Harris. Br'er Rabbit treats the creeters to a race. One sultry summer day, while the little boy was playing not far from Uncle Remus's cabin, a heavy black cloud made its appearance in the west and quickly obscured the sky. It sent a brisk gale before it, as if to clear the path of leaves and dust. Presently there was a blinding flash of lightning, a snap and a crash, and with that the child took to his heels and ran to Uncle Remus, who was standing in his door. "'Dar now!' he exclaimed, before the echoes of the thunder had rolled away. "'Dat dust and wind and rain puts me in mind of the time when old Brer Rabbit got up a big race for the pleasure of the other creeters. It was the most funniest race you ever heard tell on. Brer Rabbit went way off in the woods twill he come to the rainmaker's house. He knocked and went in, and he axed the rainmaker if he can fix it up so they can have a race tween Brer Dust and Cousin Rain, fur to see which can run the fastest. The rainmaker growled and jowered, but by and by he agree, and he say that if it was anybody but Brer Rabbit, he wouldn't give it but one thunk. Well, they fixed the day they did, and then Brer Rabbit put out to where the creatures was staying and told them the news. They don't know how Brer Rabbit know, but they all want to see the race. Now him and the rainmaker had fixed it up so that the race would be right down the middle of the big road, and when the day come, Dar's where he made the creature stand. Bra Bar at the bend and the road, Bra Wolf a little further off, and Bra Fox at a point where the crossroads was. Bra Coon and Bra Possum and the others he scattered about up and down the road. To dem what has to wait, it seems like the sun stops and all the clocks with him. Bra Bar done come growling. Bro Wolf some howling and Bro Possum some laughing, but at a while cloud comes up from summers. Twasn't such a big cloud, but Bro Rabbit knowed that, that cousin Rain was in there along with Uncle Wind. The cloud crope up, it did, till it got right over the big road, and then it kinda dropped down a little closer to the ground. It looked like it kind of stopped like a buggy for Cousin Rain to get out, so there'd be a far start. Well, he got out, cause the creatures can see him, and then Uncle Wynn, he got out. And then, gentlemen's, the race begun for to commence. Uncle Wynn hepped up a foe. He had his bellows with him, and he blowed it. Brud Dust got up from where he was layin' at and come down the road a whirlin'. He stricken old Brud Bower first, then Brud Wolf and then Brud Fox, and after that all the other creeters, and they come mighty nigh smifflicatin' them. Not never in all your born days is you ever heard such coughin' and sneezin', such snortin' and wheezin', <laughs> and they all looked like they was painted red. Bruh Bar sneezed so hard that he had to lay down in the road and Bruh Dust come mighty nigh burying him. And twas the same with the other creatures. They got the ears, the noses, and the eyes is full. And then Cousin Rain come along a pursuing Brother Dust, and he come mighty nigh drowning him. He left him kivered with mud, and they was wuss off than before. It was the longest fo they can get the mud out of the eyes and the ears, and when they get so they can see a little bit, they took notice that Bruh Rabbit, instead of being full of mud, was as dry as a chip, if not drier. It made em so mad <laughs> that they all put out after him and tried to level best for the catch, but if there was anything in the round world that Bruh Rabbit's got, it's super foots, and twa'n't no time, for the other creatures can't see hard no high of em. All the same, Bruh Rabbit ain't bargain for to have two races at the same day. But Uncle Remus said a little boy, which beat Brother Dust or Cousin Rain? 
The old man stirred uneasily in his chair and rubbed his chin with his hand. They tells me, he responded cautiously, that when Cousin Rain can't see nothing of Brother Dust, he thunked him beat. But he holler out, Brother Dust, whereabouts is you? Chapter 5 of Uncle Remus and Brer Rabbit by Joel Chandler Harris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Phil Chenevere. Brer Rabbit's Flying Trip. Dar once was a time when most of the creeters got mighty tired of Brer Rabbit's capers, and they assembled, they did, grass and meat eaters, browsers and grazers, and likewise the bone scrapers for to see what they can do. Brer Bar was dar with his big fur suit on, and old Brer Wolf fetched his big howl along, and when everything was ready with a long, loud hoot on, here come old Simon Swamp Owl along, a tooting up his two-boot. Dar was old Brer Fox, sir, with his black socks, sir, and a heap of creeters that I don't have a mention. Some bow-legged and some knock-kneed in the hock, sir, and they all agreed for to hold a convention for to stop the rabbit's pranks. Bruh Fox, he low he'll give a pot of gold, sir, to the man what can tow bruh rabbit off, sir. Bruh Buzzard say, I'm a-getting old, sir, but I'll try my hand, and then he cough, sir, and the rest of em bowed their thanks. Now old Brer Bear was a settin' on the chair, sir, so he stand up and move a motion. He up and loud, less is so's right here, sir, for to thank Brer Buzzard whiles we're in the notion, and not put it off till some other day. And then they had it up and down, sir, sputin' about what they ought to do. Some wanna give him a flower crown, sir, if he rid Brer Rabbit up there in the blue and drop him when he got half-way. They sent a runner at our old brother Rabbit to ask him to call and to tend the convention, but old friend Wobble Nose had a queer habit of knowing a thing before it was mentioned, and he come fore he got the word. He wiggled his nose and wonk his eye. Here show is the man I wants to see, sir. Bruh Buzzard, I'm trying to learn how to fly. And cause Bruh Buzzard gives a grease, sir, and all em say he's a accommodating bird. And then Bruh Buzzard half spread his wings, sir. He tried to look young, but he was old, sir. He tried to strut and walk with a swing, sir. He was dreaming about that pot of gold, sir, and what he was gwine for to buy. Bruh Buzzard ain't scarcely got true with his pride, sir, fo Bruh Rabbit lit right tween his floppers. With now hump yourself and give me a ride, sir. If you don't I'll hit, I'll hit you some whoppers when I get you up dar in the sky. Well, the creatures grinned when Bruh Rabbit riz, sir, and made a big fuss according to the nature. Ease for old Bruh Rabbit. The pleasure was all his, sir. The riding was easy as eatin' tater when it's biled and made into pie. Cause under both wings he had a paw, sir, and when Bruh Buzzard tried for to drop him, he'd scratch and tickle him with his claw, sir. And when Bruh Buzzard tried for to flap him, he'd scratch and wink his eye. And with his claws he took and steered him from post to pillar in the deep blue, sir. He'd holler and laugh, all the creatures heard him. You know how you'd feel if it had been you, sir, a waitin' for summon to fall. When old Bruh Rabbit got tired of riding, he steered Bruh Buzzard right straight to the ground, sir, and then and there went right into hiding.
Chapter Six of Uncle Remus and Br'er Rabbit by Joel Chandler Harris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Phil Chenevere. Br'er Rabbit and the Gold Mine. There had been a silence in the cabin for a long ten minutes, and Uncle Remus, looking up, saw a threat of sleep in the little boy's eyes. Whereupon he plunged headlong into a story without a word of explanation. Well, sir, one year it fell out that the craps was burned. A dry drought had done the work, and if you'd a struck a match anywhere in that settlement, the whole county would have blazed up. Old man hungriness de naturally tuck up his clothes and went parading round everywhere, and the creeters got bony and skinny. Old Brer Bar done better than any of em, cause all he had her do was go to sleep and live off his own fat. And Brer Rabbit and his old woman had put some calamus root by and saved up some sugar cane that they find lying round loose, and they got long pretty well. But the balance of the creeters was that gaunt that they ain't got over it down to this day. The creeters had the meeting place where they could all set round and talk the kind of politics they had, just like folks does at Crossroad Grocery. One day, while they was all settin' and squattin' round jowerin' and confabbin', Brer Rabbit he up and say, says he, that old Mammy Mammy Big Money told his great granddaddy that there was a mighty big and fat gold mine in these parts. And he say that he wouldn't be tall astonished to want somewhere close to Brer Bar's house. Brer Bar, he growled, he did, and he say that gold mine better not let him find it, cause after he got done with it, they wouldn't be no gold mine dar. Some laughed, some grinned, and some gapped, and after jowering some mo, they all put out to where they families was living at. But I bound you they ain't forget about that gold mine, cause from that time on, go where you might, you'd catch some of the creeters digging and graveling in the ground, some in the fields, some in the woods, and some in the big road, and they was so weak and hungry that they can scarcely gabble for falling down. Well, this went on for the longest, but by and by one day they all agree that something please to be done, and they say they'll all take one big hunt for the gold mine and then quit. They hunted in gangs, with the gangs not fur from one another, and it so happened that Brer Rabbit was in the gang with Brer Wolf, and he knowed that he had to keep his eyes a wide open. All the creeters had to dig in different places, and whilst Brer Rabbit wasn't much of a grabber, he had a way of making the others believe that he was the best of the lot. So he made a heap of motion like he was tearing up the earth. They ain't been going on this long before Bro Wolf holler out, Run here, Bro Rabbit, I done found it. Bro Bear and Bro Fox was both digging close by, and Bro Rabbit kind of wunk one eye at the elements, and he says, says he, Glad I for your sake, bro Wolf, get your gold and jar for yourself. Bro Wolf say, Come get some, bro Rabbit, come get some. Oh, bro Rabbit spawned, I'll take the leavings, bro Wolf. You take what you want, and then when you got enough, I'll get the little bit I want. Bro Wolf say, I want to show you something. Bro Rabbit low, My eyes ain't big for nothing. Bro Wolf say, I got a secret I want to tell you. Bro Rabbit Law, my years ain't long for nothing. Just stand there and do your whispering, Bro Wolf, and I'll hear every word you say. Bro Wolf ain't say nothing but make out he's grabbing, and then all of a sudden he make a dash at Bro Rabbit, but when he get where Bro Rabbit was at, Bro Rabbit ain't there no more. He done gone. Weak and hungry as he is, Bro Wolf know that he can't catch Bro Rabbit, and so he holler out, What's your hurry, Bro Rabbit? Where you gwine? 
Brer Rabbit holler back, I'm gwine home out of a bag for to tote the gold you gwine leave me. So Chapter 7 of Uncle Remus and Brer Rabbit by Joel Chandler Harris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Phil Chenevere. Brer Rabbit gets Brer Fox a hoss. Not many of the creatures was fond o' water, unless it might have been Brer Coon's daughter. Brer Bar, Brer Fox, and old Brer Rabbit. They vowed they can't never get in the habit of wading the creek or swimming the river. When it comes to that, they'd run the kibber. When folks come long for to get across, the creeters took notice that they rid a horse. Bruh Fox, he say he wish he had one, and amongst all the others he'd be the glad one. He get a bridle and a brand new saddle, and get on the horse and ride him straddle. He says, says he, he do some trotting, cause when I get started, I'm a mighty hotten. Bruh Rabbit, he smole a great big smile, with, I can't ride myself, cause I got a bile. But it seems like to me that I knows where a horse is. He's away back yon where two roads crosses. And I'll meet you dar tomorrow morning. There's about the time when day's a dawning. Bruh Fox, he say, I hear yo say so. And if I ain't sick, I'll be dar deso. Bruh Rabbit tip his hat with so long, friend. We'll get the horse you made the pen. Long for the time, Bruh Rabbit was a stirrin', and he chuckled to himself like a cat a purrin'. The horse was stretched out asleep in the pasture. Brer Rabbit went up as close as he dast her. For to see if he lied, horse twitch his tail, sir. This time we'll get you without fail, sir. So Brer Rabbit say, then he seed Brer Fox, and the nerve fine gent fur to get in the box. Then he say out loud, Good luck done sawn him and laid him down right where you want him. If you're tied to his tail, you can surely hold him, and more than that, you can trip him and roll him. So said, so done, and dar Brer Fox was, right close to the place where a heap of hocks was. Brer Rabbit, he holla, hold him down, hold him down. This make him stay right sprang on the ground. The horse, he riz with a snort and a wicker, and showed that he was something of a kicker. And then and dar, Bruh Rabbit gun to snicker, with hole in Bruh Fox, twon't do to flicker. If you make him stand still, you can ride him to quicker. The horse, he roaring and raise a mighty dust up, and fust thing you know, Bruh Rabbit here a bust up. I hope, Bruh Fox, that you Chapter Eight of Uncle Remus and Bruh Rabbit by Joel Chandler Harris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Phil Chenevere. Bro Rabbit finds the moon in the mill pond. Oh, one bright day in the middle of May, Bro Rabbit was feeling fine. He took to the road and never knowed the place where he was gwine. Oh, fur and free, says he, siree, no gal can change my mind. Bro Tarrapin sly, he walk one eye, unneath his green gourd vine. He holla and say, Where you gwine this day, with your pipe and walking cane? Bruh Rabbit wave his hand like a gal do her fan. My heart's about to bust with pain. 
I'm a heap too nice. I ain't laughed but twice since the big January rain. My day'll be done. If I don't have some fun, they'll call me Sunday Jane. I'll get solemn colic if I don't have a frolic. My head'll get flabby and swink. I'll char the pine bud cause I'm bout to lose my cud. And some nights I don't sleep a wink. If I has to sit still, oh, I'll wear the green willow and go in mourning with the mink. But I bet you a hat that for I does dat. I will show em all a new kink. So off he put on his nimble's foot, with a grin, a laugh, and a cough. To Miss Motts and Miss Meadows and all the others, he tell what is gwine ter come off. Twas a mill pond fishin', and he left em a wishin' that the wind don't blow from the north. And the creatures all before long and tall, and dem no bigger than a dwarf. Bruh Wolf and Bruh Bar all say they'd be dar, and they promise fur to fetch a sane. They agree to the day, and Bruh Rabbit say, That day don't hatter come if it rain. So said, so done, and when the time come, the big road as well as the lane was filled with a crowd all talking out loud, and a prankin' with mine and main. Bruh Rabbit was dire, with Miss Holly Hart a waitin' for the fun to begin. He shook his shank and went to the bank and made like he'd gwine to jump in. But the sight he saw made him drap his jaw and break up a great big grin. He says to Bruh Coon, Run here and see the moon a floating without a fin. He look again, she show fell in, and we got to get her out. If she stays in the pond, it's good by John, and of that there ain't no doubt. We got to have light when we play at night, for to see how to get about. We'll drag with the scene, if we don't drag in vain, we'll have good reason to shout. But when it comes to singing, there was some complaining about who was to do it all. They all make out that they want to wade out, but it fell on them that was tall. Bruh Bar, he laugh as he took a staff. Bruh Wolf say he fear he'd fall. But he took his place with a mighty wry face, and when they gun to haul. Oh, you better bet this water's wet. I feel just like a sponge. And then they all, with a kick and a squall, with a squeal and then a lunge, grabbed at the water which they hadn't order, went over their heads with a splunge. Bruh Rabbit bent. Chapter 9 of Uncle Remus and Brer Rabbit by Joel Chandler Harris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Phil Chenever. How Mr. Lion Lost His Wool. Twas just such a day as this that Mr. Lion lost his wool, remarked Uncle Remus to the little boy. Mr. Man took a notion that the time done come for him for to have a hog killing. And he got him a big barrel and filled it half full of water from the big springs. Then he piled up about a cord of wood, and as he piled he put rocks twixt the logs, and then he sought the wood after and before weeds and in the middle. Twasn't long for they had the hogs killed and everything ready for the scrape to haul off. Then he took the red hot rocks what he put in the fire and flung them in the barrel where the water was, and twan long bow fo that water was ready for the bile. Then they took the hogs one at a time and soused them in the water, and time they took em out, the hair was ready for to drap out by the roots. Then they'd scrape em with sticks and chips, and they ain't leave a har on em. Well, by and by they had all the hogs killed and cleaned and hauled off, and when everything was still as a settin' hen. 
old Brer Rabbit stuck his head out from behind a bush where he been settin' at. He stuck his head out, he did, and look all round, and then he went where the fire was, and try fur to warm hisself. He ain't been there long, for here comes Brer Wolf and Brer Fox, and then he got busy. He say, Hello, friends, howdy and welcome. I'm just fixin' fur to take a warm bath like Mr. Man get his hogs. Won't you join me? They say they ain't in no hurry. But they helped Brer Rabbit put the hot rocks in the barrel, and they watched the water bubble, and by and by, when everything was ready, who should walk up but old Mr. Lion? He had a mane from his head plumb to the end of his tail, and in some places it was so long it drug on the ground. That would make all the creatures fear the album. He growled and asked them what they doing. And when Brer Rabbit tell him, he say, that's what he long been needin'. How does you get in? Just back right in, says old Brer Rabbit, says he. And with that, Mr. Lion backed in. And the water was so hot, he tried for to get out, and he slipped in plumb to his shoulder blades. You can believe me or not, but that creature was scalded so that he hollered, and scared everybody for miles around. And when he come out, all the wool dropped out, except the bunch you see on his neck, and the little bit you find on the end of his tail, and that had come off if the tail hadn't a slipped through the bunghole of the barrel. With that, Uncle Remus closed his eyes, but not so tightly that he couldn't watch the little boy. For a moment the child said nothing, and then, I must tell that tale to mother before I forget it. So saying, he ran out of the Chapter 10 of Uncle Remus and Brer Rabbit by Joel Chandler Harris this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Phil Chenevere. How Brer Rabbit Got a House Oh, once upon a time, all the creeters, all the creeters, took a notion that they'd build a house, and fix it so as to keep out the skeeters, and fix it up next cummy rouse. They all was there, from the bar to the possum, Brer Wolf, Brer Fox, Brer Coon, with old Brer Rabbit for to standin' round and boss em, cause they had to have the house right soon. Brer Rabbit, he was busy, oh, yes, mighty busy, not doin' of a blessed thing. If he climbed a scaffold, he say he will get dizzy, so he measure and mark and sing. They built a house, and it show sure was a fine un, made a poplar and oak and pine. The littlest room was a seven by nine un, where the sick could go and whine. Brer Rabbit, he wait, and when the time come, he chosen a upstar room. And dar he sought, if I can make the rhyme come, a singing hawk from the tomb. And then he got what he ain't had order, as all the creatures said, a gun, a cannon, and a tub of water, and hit em under his bed. When the creatures come home, Brer Rabbit was ready, and he tell him he gwine to sit down. Well, set, says day, and we'll try to be steady. And with that, Brer Rabbit kind of frowned. Bang, bang, went the gun, the barrels was double, and the creeters was still as mice. Brer Bear, he say, there must be some trouble, but I hope he don't loosen the jice. Bro Rabbit, he say, whereabouts must I spit at? And Bro Wolf answer with a grin, This wheresomever you can make it hit at. Bro Fox, he rub his chin. Bro Rabbit, he took the tub of water and emptied it all on the stars. And it come nigh drowning Bro Coon's daughter, and likewise one of Bro Bars. Bro Rabbit say, when I sneeze, I'll scare you. And I hate for the habit to do. 
Brer Fox say, We'll listen and hear you. Just go right ahead with your sneeze of a do. Boomerlime went to cannon and the creeters they lit out. True when the Chapter Eleven of Uncle Remus and Br'er Rabbit by Joel Chandler Harris. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Phil Chenever. Br'er Rabbit and the Partridge Nest. Oh, what's the matter with the whippoorwill? That she sets and cries on the futter hill. And what's the matter with Miss Bob White? That she choke herself with saying good night. You know mighty well that something is wrong when they sets and sings that kind of song. Twixt a call and a cry, twixt a weep and a wail, they must be telling a mighty sad tale. Miss Whippoorwill's troubles and what she say will do for to tell some other day. But Miss Bob White, my, ain't she a sight? I'll have to tell you why she hollers good night. There once was a time, neither more nor less, when she ain't try to hide, ne'er kibber her nest. She built it in the open, where all can see, and was des as polite as she can be. She'd make her house facing east and west, and then with eggs she'd fill her nest. For to keep em warm, she'd brood and set, and keep her house from getting wet. Whiles this gwine on, Brer Rabbit come by, a wiggle in his mouth and a blink in his eye. De top of the morning, Miss Bob, says he. De same to you, Brer Rabbit, says she. Says old Brer Rabbit, I been missing you long. I was mighty feared that something was wrong. But here you set as still as a mouse, not doing nothing but keeping house. Oh, well, says she, I'm too old to gad. I used to do it, but I wish I never had. The only thing I want is to wash my dress, but I can't do that whilst I'm on my nest. Bruh Rabbit, he say, can't I help you out? I ain't doing nothing but walking about. And my old woman is willing for to bet that if setting's the thing, I'm old man set. I know mighty well, says Miss Bob White, if you set at all, it'll be done right. Thank you do, Miss Bob, go wash your dress. And I'll do what I can for to cover your nest. So off she put with a flutter and a flirt and washed her dress in a pile of clean dirt. Bruh Rabbit seized the eggs and shook his head. His mouth gun to dribble and his eye turned red. Says he, it is surely be hard for the match em, so I'll take em home and try for to hatch em. So said, so done. And then when he come back, he come in a gate twixt a lope and a rack. And Miss Bob White, at her washing her dress, went a running back to house and nest. Much obliged, ye Br'er Rabbit, and then she bowed. Say nothing, ma'am, for to make me proud, cause I been a waitin' here frettin' and sweatin', for fear I ain't such a good hand at settin'. My old woman say I got a slow fever, and I clare to goodness, I'm ready to believe her. I felt something move, I heard something run, and the eggs done gone, they ain't nar a one. I show sure is seed sights, I done hear folks talk, but never before I seed eggs walk. My goodness me, says Miss Bob White, a peepin' in the nest, you show sure is right. And ever since then when darkness falls, she gives the lost chillin' a good night calls. And ever since then, when darkness falls, she gives the lost chillin' her